You're here for a very special edition of In The Know. We are talking everything March with meteorologist Dr. Doug Gillum. March, it's going to be an interesting month, especially following an interesting February. It sure is. You know, <laughs> it's, it's always a change of a month, and we've been spoiled in most of Canada by a very mild February. February in many places felt like mm -hmm. March, giving this perception that it's clear sailing all the way to summer, winter is over. Uh, it's not, and some places have really had that wake-up call even in the last week. Okay, so Dr. Doug is going to explain the March outlook. That's coming up, plus the spring forecast was released. Doug is joining us for that too, but first, I just want to remind Canadians what March looks like across the country. This is normal. It's normal in March for Ottawa to see almost 40 centimeters of snow, or the Avalon to pick up close to 60, Calgary 22 centimeters. So if the sandals are sitting by the front door, well, keep the shovel close by too because you might need it. Now temperature wise as we look at March as a whole, you know Vancouver on average gets up into the double digits, 10 degrees. Toronto and Calgary averaging about four, Montreal about two and a half degrees. So the warming trend is coming. We know March is such a changeable month and that's why it's so hard to forecast. It really is, you know, changeable is a word that describes every March. They talk about coming in like a lamb, going out like a lion or vice versa. That's because like it just never stays the same if mm -hmm. it's tranquil at the moment, you know that's going to change. It's a stormy month. It's a changeable month. But spring usually comes first to the south coast of BC. Uh, and sometimes we have to wait a long time across the rest of the country. It's a month that teases us. And then the reality that, yes. well, it's still <laughs> sort of winter. But as we look at March as a whole, you'll see that we expect that most of the country will be warmer than normal. The exception is actually BC, mm -hmm. where normals are the highest. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's a changeable month. Winter's not over yet. It still has some parting punches for many. Okay, now we do think there could be a mid-March interrupter. Doug, can you explain that yeah. a little further? Yeah, I mean, as we start the month, it's going to be warmer than normal on the eastern half of the country and colder than normal in the west. That's actually some good news, getting that desperately needed alpine snow. As we go through the month, the focus of the warmth will shift west and the okay. question is do we then just see a mild pattern dominate across the entire country based on how the winter has played out that's kind of what you'd expect but there's some signs that the pattern could turn uh, sig significantly colder hmm. uh, during late March the question is is that just a brief temporary interruption as we've seen at times through the winter or is that going to be a hostile pattern takeover <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Late in the month. And we don't know yet, mm -hmm. but it's something we're watching closely. Uh, a brief cool down or a lengthier one. Okay, and, and what's the driver for this? What's causing the uncertainty? There's something called a stratospheric warming event. And what that means is that that, is a, that causes a major disruption to the polar vortex. It either splits it or shifts it off the pole. What we don't know yet is if we're going to see the polar vortex end up on the Siberia side of the pole or if that's going to come into Canada like we saw during mid-January when they had that period of mm -hmm. severe cold. It hasn't tipped its hand just yet on where it's going to go. If it's in Siberia, we're golden. We're just going to coast through with mild weather dominating. But 2018, similar pattern, and we ended up with an extended period of cold for central and eastern Canada. It lasted into April something to watch. Okay.